the question about doing routine genetic testing uh, on patients on tumor samples is an interesting one. And it's, it's, again, one of those questions that's going to come to the forefront. It's coming to the forefront right now. I mean, we have, not only do we have advances in looking at the genome of tumors and looking at the, what we call the germline, you know, the, the native DNA of, of patients, but we also, we have cell-free DNA and trying to figure out where that fits into the, this whole picture. And whether it's a predictive test, does it help us understand if a cancer is recurring? There's been some research reported recently in that regard. So I, I, in order to, to try a drug on a patient today, I think genomic data is going to be critical for target therapy. It's an interesting point because if you go back in the relatively recent history of targeted therapies, there was a watershed moment, in, in, in my, my opinion, um, that happened with one of the drugs that was useful to treat lung cancer. And it turned out that there were two drugs in the market, the both targeted therapies, and they were both effective. But one, you know, one drug seemed more effective than another, so the, the second drug got put aside. But to get the 10 patients who responded, 10 whatever the percentage was, you had to treat 100. Well, the interesting, uh, the interesting question was, if a genetic test came along that predicted the response, what would the companies do? What would the pharma companies do? That was the beginning of the requirement, to me at least, wasn't the beginning, but in, in my view of the world, was one of the first examples of the pharma, and I wrote, I wrote actually an opinion piece at the time saying, how are they going to move? Because it's their economic interest to treat 100 patients, not to treat the 10. Well, the companies, eventually the mutation was discovered. The companies did treat only those patients who had the mutation and basically were off on a whole new path to the point today that the biomarker is almost a requirement before the medication goes into clinical trial, particularly for the targeted therapies. Immunotherapies are still under discussion in most diseases. So um, to think about it, to the company, it doesn't make sense to have a biomarker, but that's what they've done. Not every company, but most. And I think having that information is critical to having successful trials and successful treatments.